This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. My name is Dr. Rajiv Kumar and I am the Medical Director of the Movement Disorder Center at the Colorado Neurological Institute. I would like to introduce our new Parkinson's disease education video series specifically designed for patients. We often find that patients who are knowledgeable about their disease can be much more proactive in working best with their physician as well as other healthcare professionals to ensure they have their best outcome. Patients' families can also be very helpful and we hope that this video series will also help to educate caregivers and families. Today's first video will provide basic information on what Parkinson's disease is, how it affects the brain, the symptoms, as well as some basics on treatment. Parkinson's disease is a slowly progressive neurological disorder in which cells are slowly lost in the brain. The fact that cells are lost makes this a neurodegenerative disorder fitting in the same category as Alzheimer's disease. Parkinson's disease usually develops later in life. The average age of diagnosis is 62 years. The disease most commonly presents itself between ages 40 and 80, but occurs in younger and older individuals as well. Young onset Parkinson's disease begins before age 40. This accounts for less than 5% of individuals. Unfortunately, we do not currently have a cure for Parkinson's disease or any definitive therapy which has been shown to slow the progression or prevent the disease. However, there are many medications that can significantly help improve symptoms. Levodopa is the gold standard treatment for Parkinson's disease and is the most effective for motor symptoms. Nearly all patients show improvement when using levodopa. Nonetheless, even with treatment, the disease continues to progress. There is a great deal of research going on throughout the world attempting to develop treatments which will slow or cure Parkinson's disease as well as better treat the variety of symptoms. Parkinson's disease affects many areas of the brain. Several different cell types degenerate and many different systems are affected. The various chemical messenger systems affected are shown by the colored arrows with each color representing a different neurotransmitter. In Parkinson's disease, the most substantial area of degeneration is the substantia nigra. Cells in the substantia nigra produce the neurotransmitter dopamine. Generally, about 50% of the dopamine-producing cells of the substantia nigra have degenerated before motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease begin. As the disease progresses, more and more of these cells are lost. On the left side of this image, a healthy midbrain is shown with the dark region of the substantia nigra strongly colored. On the right side, the midbrain of a patient with Parkinson's disease is shown. We can see that the substantia nigra, or dark substance, is now a faint gray smudge, indicating that a large number of these pigmented cells have been lost. Cells in the substantia nigra produce dopamine and release it in a physiologic fashion in order to facilitate movement. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. In other words, it allows communication from one neuron to the next. When these dopamine-producing cells are lost in the substantia nigra, a dopamine deficiency occurs, leading to motor symptoms. Many of the medications used to treat Parkinson's disease directly act to replace this dopamine deficiency. The classic motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease are tremor at rest, bradykinesia or slowness of movement, stiffness or rigidity of the limbs and trunk, and postural instability or impaired balance. Not all patients experience all of these symptoms, especially at disease onset. About 20% of patients with Parkinson's disease have little or no tremor throughout the course of their disease. Other ancillary symptoms occur, including loss of facial expression, softness of speech, and a tendency toward a shuffling gait. Here we see a tremor-dominant Parkinson's disease patient. He has asymmetric left greater than right sided resting tremor as well as some sustained postural tremor. His tremor improves somewhat with action. He also demonstrates a left greater than right sided bradykinesia or slowness of movement. He has difficulty initiating left 
hand and foot repetitive alternating movements including rotation of the left hand and foot tapping. He is able to arise from a chair relatively easily. He has only mild impairment of gait with mild reduction in stride length and slight dragging of the left leg. His balance is relatively unaffected with a normal response to a pull test. This patient has only minimal tremor. She has predominantly left-sided bradykinesia and rigidity. She has difficulty initiating movements, especially alternating movements, with slowness on the left side. She has no difficulty arising from a chair. Her gait is quite impaired with short stride length, slow speed, and freezing of gait. She has moderately flexed posture and markedly reduced arm swing. Her balance is relatively unaffected with a normal response to a pull test. As many different brain systems are affected by Parkinson's disease, several non-motor symptoms occur as well. Common non-motor symptoms include difficulty with memory or thinking or cognitive problems, trouble with the onset or maintenance of sleep, mood disorders such as depression, difficulty controlling the bladder, and problems with constipation. Although non-motor symptoms are commonly very mild early in the disease, these symptoms become more severe and more troublesome as the disease progresses. The symptoms of Parkinson's disease vary greatly from patient to patient. However, Typically, symptoms begin on one side of the body and then spread to the other side of the body before balance is affected. We hope that you have enjoyed this introductory video about Parkinson's disease and will join us in subsequent videos in our Parkinson's education series specifically designed for patients and caregivers. There is a great deal of research and advances going on in Parkinson's disease and here at the Colorado Neurological Institute we are integrally involved with research in Parkinson's disease. If you are more interested, please feel free to contact us for additional information by visiting our website.